Good evening to all of our listeners from your local Radio Blanca in Barcelona. I'm your host, Lara Gutman, and in today's podcast for the 355th day since COVID-19 started, we're bringing you a very special episode. Did international relations begin in 1648 or was it before? The answer may shock you. We reunite today with two of the finest academics in this matter, Marco Lagae and Marina Martinez second year IR students who for the next 10 minutes will try to tackle this previous question. Marco and Marina, thank you both so much for being here today. Thank you for inviting us. It's really a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Thank you guys. But before you delight the audience with your knowledge, there are some main concepts that have to be taken into account to further understand what we're talking about. The first one is international relations which is an area of study which comprises economics, politics, and law on a global level. Generally, for, for IR to exist, there has to be an international system in place. Many of these systems have existed along the course of history, and these international systems are given when there are interactions between two or more independent polities, with frontiers interacting on a political, military, economic, and cultural levels. According to mainstream IR ideology, it is believed that international relations began in 1648 with the ending of the Thirty Years' War, the Peace of Westphalia, and the development of state sovereignty, which became the basis of the modern state. The American Letters, which is Marco and Marina's case of study today, consist of over 300 tablets with diplomatic content between Egyptian kings, the Egyptian pharaoh, and neighboring, content, neighboring powers in the 14th century BC. These neighbors were Babylonia, Assyria, Hatti, and Mitanni. An overview of the, over the content of the letters will be exposed, demonstrating the existence of the various levels of interaction between the politics mentioned. This academic thesis is focused on a broader historical and geographical perspective. Such as Busan and Little, their project similarly intends to portray that it is necessary to take into account the notion of previous international structures such as the Amarna system. Their key statement is that while the 1648 Peace of Westphalia did have a major impact in IR and our way of understanding global affairs, only focusing on such an event would fail to portray the complexity of earlier ages, as well as giving it as a Eurocentric only perspective. The Amarna letters, while they may not have been the earliest form of IR, provide insight into the essence of diplomatic relations between the global powers and smaller actors. Please, Marina, could you develop a bit more on this? Yes, of course. As you mentioned, the unexpected occurrence of the native population finding a collection of tablets just at the ending of the 1880s near the modern town of Tel Ilamana in Middle Egypt introduced the possibility for a different perspective in the academic and mainstream literature of international relations. The Amana letters 382 identified tablets symbolize a tradition established as far back as the 14th century from before Christ, responsible for keeping daily communications among kings through traditional practice. It united the ancient Near East populations in a multipolar and polycultural way, resolving language, history, and political barriers. With these capabilities, the device was usually able to ensure su successful kingdom relationships between the different actors in the area. That's shocking. Could you tell us a bit more regarding the utility for these tablets? Of course. When considering the study of international relations, there are four main types of interrelationship. We're in peace, trade, diplomacy, and religion and culture. The Amanda regions, therefore, were also based on war and peace, as it was one of the core issues for achieving long-lasting ties without difficulty in addressing one another. You know what they say, with great power comes great responsibility. Could you illustrate an example for this? Yes. Some primary source fragments quote, as you can see in the screen, related the events of some disavowing the Lord and the consequence they could suffer. Thank you for your insight. Marco, could you tell us a bit more about these interdependency levels? What about trade? 
Uh, sure, well, the Amarna kings knew that another key consequence of peaceful interaction between them offered many benefits besides securing long-lasting peace, such as international trade opportunities and access to materials from other lands. The interdependence, meaning that the diplomatic and political connections enable successful trade links between the polities. The letters are textual evidence of both land and maritime trade that went beyond the Amarna powers, extending through the Mediterranean city-states and colonies even. Thank you. And how did diplomatic relationships became, become established in those regions? What were their purpose? Well, it seems that kingdoms begin establishing diplomatic relations by sending a messenger from the kingdom, which will deliver an, Amar an Amarna letter and various other gifts. The purpose of these diplomatic relations between kingdoms was to secure peace and trade, as said before, principally. Despite the long waiting times for tablets to arrive, the kingdoms exchanged also important information, as well as declaring the needed resources. Okay, regarding gift giving, each exchange of letter was meant to be complemented by gifts and also the sender intended to receive grants of equivalent or more excellent volume response. Moreover, this matter of gift will become the main focus of Egypt and some foreign powers around. A clear example is reflected in the EA7 tablet, which shows how different interactions and relations were carried out. We can find it when analyzing the case of the kingdom of the land Assyria, Ashur Ubalid, which wants to establish diplomatic relations with Egypt. In this case, two horses, a chariot, and a lapis luzini stone was given. Thank you, Marina. Uh, and what about communication? What languages were used in the Amarna system? Well, scholars typically, typically consider Akkadian, or to be more precise, an alleged peripheral Akkadian, to be the commonly known language, at least at the diplomatic level. This lingua franca was used mostly for foreign or diplomatic written correspondence among the various polities at the time. These tablets comprise the best examples of the writing and language of that time. Nonetheless, the truth is that the ancient Near East comprised a variety of common language groups, meaning that at the daily level, this Akkadian linguistic union was not really used. And were all regions disposed the same way or was there some sort of hierarchy? Well, actually, there was a hierarchy. What we can extract from the Marna letters is that the system had two kinds of relations, vertical and horizontal ones. Vassals and rulers in the Syro-Palestinian region had a vertical relationship with the King Pharaoh of Egypt, who was on the top, while other kings of neighboring great powers had a horizontal relationship, treating each other as equals or brothers. These other kings were Babylonia, the kings of Babylonia, Hatti and Mitanni, for example. We can find some examples on the translations of these uh, of many tablets on the Marna letters. Those relationships are portrayed through these examples. We can see the difference in the vocabulary used to refer to each other in each case. While vassals use words such as my lord, my son, my god, and, I'm, and I am at your feet, etc., uh, we see that the horizontal relationship between the rulers treat each other as brothers. Thank you, Marco. And thank you both of you guys. That was all very interesting, but I'm afraid we're running out of time. Marina, for these last seconds, could you give us some final conclusions on this project? Yeah, sure. For our final thoughts, it is important to remark that among the letters represent a practice developed over the centuries to maintain constant interactions between the different powers and other rulers of the region. This is why it's crucial for the study of international relations on four international levels. Being this, war, peace, trade, diplomacy, and religion and culture. Therefore, the Marna Letters case study proves our thesis objective and they help us understand why the 1648 Peace of Westphalia didn't necessarily start IR but rather this had already been established through the first formalization of diplomatic encounters and relations between distinct powers. 
Okay, I'm afraid we ran out of time, uh, but thank you to both of you guys again. Uh, thank you to our listeners at home as well for tuning up for today's special episode. Sadly, we're going to take a winter break, so we won't be publishing any new episodes until the 7th of January. Until then, enjoy the holidays, get some rest and stay safe. This is Lara Goodman and you're listening to Blanquerna Barcelona. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.